All right. Today's lesson is a review of, of what you guys probably know about circles. And we're just going to review them and make sure we go through them um, much more thoroughly than you probably have in the past. So first off, what is a circle? A circle is a locus of points that are all equidistant from a point called the center. When we say locus, it just means a bunch or infinite number of points uh, that are equidistant from a point called the center. So when I look at this circle, right, the distance from the center to any point on the circle, right, all the points that are on this circle are the same distance away from that center. Okay, so that's how we make up a circle. And remember, circle is made up of an infinite number of points. And if I plot every point around this circle, the distance from all of those points to the center are equal. Now the center of a circle is basically the point um, equidistant from all the points that make up the circle. It also represents the name of the circle. So if I wanted to name this circle here, I would use the circle symbol, which is a circle with a dot in the middle, and I would say A. So that would be circle A. Now there is a way to find the center of a circle. All right. So the directions are here. The first thing we're going to do is draw two chords. And, and we'll talk more about that. But that's just two segments whose endpoints are on the circle. Now we're going to construct the perpendicular bisectors for each chord. And then find the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. Right? So to show you what I mean by that, here I have a, a circle. And you cannot see the center. All right? So what I'm going to do is use GeoGebra to find the center. So, first thing I'm going to do is construct one chord here, right? And then I'm just going to do another random chord. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is find the perpendicular bisector for each of these. Now, I'll just show you that GeoGebra allows me to unhide. And you'll see that A is where that center should be when I'm done. All right? So, right away here, if I... Oh, let me hide that again. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is basically plot the midpoint of each of these segments, right? So I'm going to go, I'm going to find the midpoint of this segment. And I'm going to find the midpoint of this segment, right? So right away, just so you see, if I measure this segment that's midpoint because that's equal to that and these pieces are also equal right so now what I'm going to do is find a line that's perpendicular to each of these chords right and go through the midpoint that gives me the perpendicular bisector so perpendicular line I'm going to go through this point perpendicular to that line I'm going to go through this point perpendicular to that line. And if you look, right, as soon as I unhide point A, notice how the center of that circle, right, is at point A, which is the intersection of the two perpendicular bisectors. Okay? So, if you had to use a ruler in that, you would basically just find the midpoint by measuring and divide the, the distance by 2. Um, and then draw a line perpendicular to the segment through that point. Okay, next, some other definitions. The diameter. The diameter of a circle is basically a segment whose endpoints are on the circle, right? And when you connect those endpoints, they also pass through the center of the circle. Then you have the radius, is a segment whose endpoints are the center of the circle and a point on the circle. So this here represents the diameter. This here represents the radius. Now if you think about it, if I were to double the radius, that would give me the diameter. So anytime I know the diameter and I want to find the radius, or sorry, if I want to find the, the diameter, all I do is multiply the radius by 2. If I'm looking for the radius, all I do is take the diameter and divide it by 2. 
All right. Now, the next part is the circumference of a circle. The circum circumference of a circle is basically the distance around the circle. So if I was to walk, start here on the circle and walk all the way around, the distance that I walk represents the circumference. Now, the circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle, so it's basically the perimeter of a circle. Although a circle can't have a perimeter, we call that the circumference. All right? Now, how do we find it? Well, we're going to go back to GeoGebra here. Now, if I really wanted to find it, what I would do is take a string, and I'd put one end of the string there, wrap it around, right, the circle, and after I'm done wrapping around the circle, I would lay that string out and measure it, right? And that would give me the circumference of the circle. Now, mathematicians learn that that's not an easy process. So what did they do? Well, they basically figured out a formula, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So what I've done is I've created, so I've created a new, new circle and I've drawn the, the, diameter inside that circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm basically going to measure the circumference of the circle. All right. So I'm going to measure the distance or length of it, and it tells you the circumference is 26.2. But then I'm going to measure the length of the diameter here, which is 8.3. So now that I have, you know, the circumference measured and I have the, the diameter measured, what I'm going to do is go to my calculator and I'm going to take 26.2 and divide it by 8.3. When I do that, I get this number, right? Now, it's probably not the best, right? But you guys should have a good idea of what that is going to um, basically be close to. 3.156. Now, because this rounds... Let's do another one. If I go third, now that I moved it, all the measurements stay um, proportional. 35.3 divided by 11.2. Notice it gives me 3.15, and we're getting closer. And if I go ahead and I were to um, get closer measurements, right, more accurate measurements without rounding, this would get really close to 3.14. And if it gets close to 3.14, right, anytime you take the circumference and you divide it by the diameter, what you end up getting is 3.14, and that ends up being what we call pi, right? So now what mathematicians said is, what's easier to, to calculate, the circumference of a circle or the diameter? And they said, well, we can find the center now, we can find the diameter really easy. So if I had to solve this equation for the circumference, you find out the circumference of a circle is just the diameter times pi. If you look here, if I multiply both sides by the diameter, I'm left with the circumference. So anytime we go to find the circumference of a circle, all we do is take the diameter, or circumference, and sorry, the diameter and multiply it by pi. So right away here, find the circumference of this circle. Well, you have to know that the radius is given to us. So we're going to find the diameter by doing 2 times the radius. So 2 times 15 gives me a diameter of 30. So now the circumference would be diameter times pi, right, which is 30 pi. So now that would be the exact answer right? This would be your exact. But now if I wanted the approximate answer, I would go to my calculator. I go 30 times second, carat key, you see the pi symbol above it, enter, and the approximate circumference would be approximately 94.2 inches. Okay. Now you'll also see that people just say the diameter is also 2 times the radius. So the circumference of a circle could also be 2 times pi times the radius. And if you notice here, 
2 times pi times 15 would give me 30 pi also. Okay, the next one. Right away I look, the diameter is given to me already, so the circumference would be 2, or sorry, diameter times pi. So, 24 times pi would be the exact answer. And if I go to my calculator to find the approximate, I would say 24 times pi would give me approximately 75.4, and that would be the circumference. Okay. Now, the area of a circle, right? This is the amount of space inside a circle, right? I really like the following video that goes through how to find the area of a circle, so I'm going to have you guys watch that. Pi r squared gives you the area of a circle, but where does pi r squared come from? First, we'll draw a circle and fill in its area. Next, we will divide it into large equal parts and arrange them in a rectangular formation. As you can see, it barely resembles a rectangle. So next, we will divide the circle into small equal pieces, and we will arrange them in the same manner. You can see that it appears more like a rectangle. So, if we divide the circle into even more smaller pieces, you can see that every time the shape becomes more like a rectangle. So, how small must we divide a circle before we can get a perfect rectangle? Well, we can keep on dividing the circle into small, smaller, or the smallest pieces you can make. But the, but the answer, answer is, is to divide, divide the circle infinitely many times until we cannot distinguish the lines, and eventually the circle can now become a perfect rectangle. So, the area of the circle is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is equal to height times height. The height of the rectangle as you, as you can see, is the same, is the as, same the as the radius, so height so is, is equal to radius. To find the, to base, find the base, we need to look, need at, to look the at the circumference of the circle. And when we and compare, when we compare the, base the base and the circumference, we can see that, can the, see that the base is equal to, is equal to one half, one half the, circumference. the circumference. Remember that the circumference, the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. When we combine when we it with one half, half, the twos cancel, the twos cancel out, out, and base, and is, equal base is equal to pi r. r. So now, so base, now times base times height becomes pi r times r. r. Times r. Combine, the r's combine the r's together, and we have, and we have r squared, pi r squared, which is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is equal to the area of the circle. So as I stated, the area of a circle, the amount of space inside it. So if I have a circle, the amount of space inside it is equal to pi times the radius squared. So when I look at the first example down below, here the radius is given to me. So to find the area of the circle, I'm going to do pi times right um, 15 squared, which will give me 225 pi. That would be your exact answer, but then your approximate answer, right, if I go and put 225 pi in the calculator, it would be approximately, what is that, 706.9? And that would be inches squared. Okay, now the next one, they tell me the diameter is 24, but in order to find... The area, I need the radius. And remember, radius is half the diameter, so take the diameter, divide by 2. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 
So now I can find the area of the circle. And that would be pi times 12 squared, which would be 144 pi. And that is approximately, if I go to my calculator, 144 pi would be about 452.4. And that is centimeters squared. Okay. So in the next example, it says find the area of a, a circle, right, whose circumference is 36 pi. Well, if the circumference is 36 pi, I know from here the circumference is diameter times pi. So right away, I know I can find the diameter is 36. If the diameter is 36, I know the radius is half of that. So, 36 divided by 2, my radius is 18. Now, the area of the circle would be pi times 18 squared, which is going to give you 324 pi. And if I go ahead and do, right, just even if I do it like this, second, oh, second pi times the radius squared, Right, it would give me about 1017.9, and that would be inches squared. Okay, so exact and approximate. The next one find the circumference of a circle whose area is 100 pi. Well, if the area is 100 pi, I know pi times the radius squared is equal to 100 pi. So the radius squared is equal to 100. So the radius is the square root of 100, which is 10. If my radius is 10. Now the circumference of my circle is 2 times pi times the radius, which is 2 times pi times 10, which is 20 pi. And if I go to my calculator there, 20 pi. is approximately 62.8 and that would be inches okay number seven here it says find the area of a circle whose circumference is 56.55 right now when I look here if my diameter times pi is 56.55 this is not equal to 56.55 pi, but what I'm going to do is divide by pi. So right away when I go to find the diameter, 56.55 divided by pi will give me about 18. So here my diameter is 18, so now to find the radius, 18 divided by 2 would give me 9. So the area would be equal to pi times 9 squared, which is 81 pi. Okay, the next one, they tell you the area is 28.27. So right away, pi times radius squared is equal to 28.27. First thing I'm going to do is divide by pi, and 28.27 divided by pi gives me about 9. So right away here, that'll round to 9. So my radius squared is equal to 9. So my radius is equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. So now to find the circumference, 2 times pi times the radius, 2 times pi times 3 would give me 6 pi. Okay, and the last example here. Find the circumference and area of a circle. Well, the thing is, right now, I have to see that this is a right triangle. And what I'm going to use is trig to find the length of the radius here. 
So I know that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 20 degrees is equal to the radius over 36. So the radius would have a length of 36 times the sine of 20. So 36 sine 20 would equal 32.9. So now to find the circumference, all I'm going to do, 2 times pi times 32.9. So while I have that radius plugged in there, all I go is times 2 times pi. And right away I get about 2, what is that, 206.5. And now to find the area, pi times 32.9 squared would give me pi times 32.9 squared. And right away that would give me about 3,400.5. Okay, go ahead, try the homework, and let me know if you have any questions.